Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to use a program called Handbrake in order to reduce the size of your video files. Now in my case, I like to have smaller size of video files for uploading to YouTube because I'm on a really slow internet connection. Uh, but I also like to be able to save space on the hard drive too. So anyway, that would be a couple of reasons why you might want to reduce the size of your uh, videos. As well as you're, you're going to keep the quality just about the same. At least I can't tell the difference. Uh, so anyway, first off, you go to handbrake.fr. If you're on Windows, you can just click on this red install button, or uh, download button, rather. And if you're on Mac, you can do this. Or uh, Ubuntu has Handbrake as well. So anyway, download and install that. There's no uh, little sneaky check marks or anything that you have to worry about with Handbrake, uh, since it is open source. It's not just a free program. It's completely open source. but. Uh, Anyway, I'll go ahead and open it up here. By default, it's going to be on this normal profile over here, so uh, we'll start with that and see where we go. Uh, I'll show you how I set mine up. But uh, First off, I've got this video file here, which is what I want to transcode. It's about 2.22 gigabytes. And first thing we'll do is we'll just take it and drag it onto this little thing that says source. It's the easiest way to get it into here. Uh, about a 10 minute video. So first thing I'm going to do is instead of this normal profile, we're going to go to this high profile. Uh, just so I don't forget about that. Uh, and then you'll find your uh, file here. So we're going to stick it right here. And All right, so you put the file name that you want to call your video in here. Click on save. And now that should pop up in here. Uh, the output settings here, container is MP4, that's what you want. Uh, I think it defaults to MP4, but if it's not on there, make sure it's set to MP4. Uh, down here, uh, 1920 by, well, what you'll do is you set this anamorphic thing, whatever that is, to none. Uh, you want to keep the aspect ratio. And I would just leave it on whatever the resolution that the source has. So in my case, 1920 by 1080. Don't have to mess with the cropping thing. Uh, filters. Unless you want to deinterlace your video, I uh, just leave all this stuff off. So anyway, next thing here. This is kind of the important one. Uh, this video tab. So video codec at H.264. Yeah, H.264, X264, whatever you want to call it. Uh, just leave that where it's at. Um, I would probably do constant frame rate. And if you don't know what the frame rate of your source is or the frame rate of your original video, I uh, just leave it same as source. But in my case, I know that it's 59.94. Uh, so I'm just going to set it there. Now, this X264 preset, this is basically uh, how fast either how fast your computer is or how long you want to wait for this thing to uh, transcode. Uh, the further you go toward this way, the longer it's going to take. The further you go this way, the faster it is. Uh, the drawback to going faster is it decreases the efficiency. And when you decrease the efficient efficiency, it's either going to uh, cause the file size to go up, or it's going to uh, cause the quality to go down. So with my computer, I set this at fast right there. And this stuff here. Uh, H.264 profile, you want that on high, and then the level here, you want that on 4.1, so that's already where it needs to be. And then constant quality setting, I usually do about 20, or 21, I mean. Uh, and the way that this works, as it explains in that little uh, dialog box that pops up there, the closer you go this way, which is goes to, what, 51, the smaller the file size, but the lower the quality, and then toward this way, You'll actually get lossless video if you go all the way up there, which will be uh, really big file sizes, but it'll be uh, the best quality you can get. Yeah, so, anyway, we go constant quality of uh, 21, which is usually what I use. Uh, and this constant quality thing is pretty cool because it varies the bit rate a lot based on how much movement there is in the scene and stuff like that. So it really does keep the quality just about the same as the original video. Uh, but it just puts bitrate where it actually needs to be and takes bitrate away from where you don't need it uh, versus just kind of like the average bitrate doesn't work quite that well. And that's why you don't, uh, 
that's why you'd want to use Handbrake instead of just your uh, video editing software to turn the settings down. So anyway, next the audio. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of this one and then I just set this to auto pass through. Works fairly well. And subtitles and chapters, you don't really have to mess with that unless you have subtitles you want to put into it. But uh, anyway, I'll work there and. That's actually about it. The only thing left to do is hit start. And you'll see some stats come up across the bottom here. Uh, that's the percentage of it that's done. That's how many frames per second it's encoding. That's the average frames per second that it's encoded. Uh, estimated time remaining, uh, elapsed job, or elapsed time, and then your pending jobs. Uh, one of the nice things you can do with Handbrake if you have multiple uh, videos to encode, you can put them all into one folder and you can actually add them into a queue. Uh, I might go over how to do that in a different video. Alright, so it took about 12 minutes to uh, completely render that video and uh, the original file was 2.22 gigabytes. Uh, the completely rendered file is 519 megabytes or about a half of a gigabyte, so uh, it's a pretty good improvement. Uh, just going to save a lot of hard drive space as well as upload a lot faster uh, to YouTube or wherever else. So uh, anyway, I hope you uh, found this useful and that's it for now guys, bye.